Well, welcome. In this video, we're going to be looking at how to find probabilities using the standard normal distribution. If you haven't already done so, you want to make sure you watch the previous video so you know what this normal distribution is all about. Now, under this curve here, the important thing to understand from this first paragraph is that it represents the probability distribution because the area between this line and we'll call this the z-axis is always going to be 1. So in other words, if you were to find the sum of all that data underneath the line, it'll always add up to be 1. And that's important to remember as we get to some of the problems that we're going to look at a little later on. And it's also important to understand this concept here that's highlighted. And that's that the standard normal probability distribution is a distribution of the z-scores. Now, in a future video, we're going to be learning how to find a z-score. So in this video, in this lesson, they're going to be giving us those values for the z-scores. But just know that the distribution of the data is based on the distribution of z-scores. Now to find the, or calculate these specific probabilities, the way that we're going to do this is we're going to first figure out, again, we're going to convert the information to z-scores. And like I already mentioned, this lesson, they're already going to do that for us. But it's important to review this idea that if uh, everything to the left of 0, the probability of that distribution would be 0.5, or 50% of the data would be to the left of your mean. But then that also means that 50% uh, of your data would also be to the right of your mean. But that's, again, that's review from what we talked about in the previous video. Now, in this lesson, it's important to um, have this table. So you can get this table from your book, or you can get this table online. This is a table for the um, normal distribution of data. So this is going to give us the area. This is important to understand that this data, this table, gives the area under the standard normal curve to the left of a given positive number A. Now there's a lot of information there. Again, this is going to give the area under the curve to the left of a number. Now that number A represents the number of standard deviations that a z-score is above the mean. Now the way that we read this table is this first column underneath this A gives us our value for A to the tenths place, and these numbers here across the top represents the digit that's in the hundreds place. So for example, if I wanted to find the um, percent of data to the left of 0.63, so what we're going to do is we're going to find 0.6 underneath that column for our value for A, find 3, that would represent your hundreds place, and when you do that you get 0.7357. So that means that 73.57% of your data would be under your standard deviation of 0.63. Let's look at some other examples. Here it says consider a data set with a standard normal distribution. So let's stop with that sentence. It's important to understand that when you hear that sentence, it's not just something to breeze over. That means that it's going to be something that would follow that normal curve. And it says, find the probability that a randomly chosen observation is less than 0.85. That is, less than 0.85 standard deviations above the mean. So the way that we're going to do that is this. If you look at our curve, so this represents one standard deviation above the mean. 0.85 would be right about here. So we're going to use that table to find the area of the curve to the left of 0.85. So the way that we're going to do that, if we go back to our table, Here we go. Find 0.8 in this first column under the value for A. Find 5 in your hundredths place. And where those match up is 0 0.8023. So our answer would be 0 0.8023. Or if we write that as a percent, we could say it's about 80%. So when it says write the meaning of the result in words, the nearest percent, we can say this. So we can say 80% of the values are less than 0.85 standard deviations above the mean. Let's look at another one. Now this one's going to get a little bit trickier. Now it says find the probability that a randomly chosen observation from a standard normal distribution is less than negative 0.21. So again, that first sentence tells us that it would follow 
a normal curve. So we can draw out a normal curve to give us something to look at. Now when it says that it's going to be less than negative 0.21, now our table only gives values that are positive, that are greater than or equal to 0. So we're not going to find negative 0.21 anywhere on the table. Now we have to understand some concepts about that normal curve that we, talk about, that we talked about in our previous video. So here's where negative 0.21 would be. So we want to find the area that would be under that half of the curve, or that part of the curve. Now remember from that previous video that the normal curve is symmetrical to the y-axis. So another way that I could look at this, if I were to take that data and flip it over the y-axis, it would be the same as that section up here, above 0.21, where our table will give us everything to the left of 0.21. So let's go ahead and do that. So if you look at our table here, here's where A is 0.21. Here's where our hundreds place would be, or here's where A is 0.2, here's where our hundreds place is 1, so that value is going to be 0.5832. But remember, that does not give me what I'm looking for, that just gives me the value to the left of 0.21. We want to find the area for this section here. So that section there is going to be. The, remember, all of the data under the normal curve would add up to be a total of 1. So if I want to find what that section there would be, we would take 1 minus that 0.5832. And when you do that, you get 0.4168 as your answer. So that means about 41 or 42 percent of your data is 0.21 standard deviations below your mean. Okay, let's look to see how we can look, how we can do the same stuff on our calculators. So once you get out your TI Inspires, and then what we're going to do is we're going to look at this example. Now this next example says about what percent of the data in a standard normal distribution are within one standard deviation of the mean. Now you might recall that we actually talked about what that value would be in the previous uh, video. But let's look to see how we can find that value using your calculators. So the first step is to make sure that we go to a calculator screen. And under a calculator screen, go to Menu. And under Menu, find Probability. And under Probability, we're going to be looking at Distribution. So that's the fifth option there. And we're going to go to the second one here that says Normal CDF. Now the lower bound, it's going to be defaulted, set to be negative infinity. That means if you're going to look at that, and if, it was, if we were trying to find the area of a graph that was to the left of, for example, the last one that we just did, left with negative 0.21. The lower bound would go on to inf negative infinity. Our upper bound would be the upper region would be of negative 0.21. So for this one, we want our lower bound to be negative 1. And our upper bound to be positive 1, because we're trying to find the area of the curve between negative 1 and 1. And when you do that, you get about 0.68, or about 68% of your values would be within that first standard deviation of the mean. Now we could also do this without our calculator, so I want to show you both ways. So to do this without your calculator, we're going to use that table again that we've been using in this lesson. So the first step, if you think about what this would look like, I want to sketch a graph here. So we're trying to find the area under that part of our curve. So again, going from negative 1 to 1. Now our table, we can look up on our table to figure out uh, what percent of the data would be to the left of 1, or what would the area of that graph be to the left of 1. And when you do that on your table, we're going to be looking at 1.00. So why don't you guys go ahead and look to see what that value would be. Okay, and you should get 0.8413. But again, that is everything to the left of 1. And I don't want everything to the left of 1. I just want just between negative 1 and 1. So what we have to do is we have to take into consideration the fact that we need to take away from that 0.8413 the area to the left of negative 1. And to find that, we're going to do just like we did in the previous lesson, or the previous example. So for this one here, we got that from the table. We're going to subtract from that the area to the left of negative 1. And the way that we do that is we would take 1 minus 
3. And when you do that, you get 0.1587. Subtract those and you get your answer, which would be 0.6826, which if you round that to the nearest percent is 68%. So you can see that we could do this again by using that table or the other method would be using your calculators. You want to be familiar with both techniques for both the quiz and the test. Let's look at the next example. About what percent of the data in a standard normal distribution are within 0.5 standard deviations of the mean? So this time, again, if we look at a normal curve, So we're trying to find within a half a standard deviation of the mean. So that means above and below the mean. So we're trying to find this area right here. So we would do that the same way that we did the first one. We're first going to find the area from the table. Then take and figure out what would be the area to the left of negative 0.5 by subtracting the number we got from our table from 1. And then subtract those two values to figure out what that area would be from negative 0.5 to 0.5. So why don't you guys go ahead and try this one on your own. So why don't you pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check to see if you have the correct answer. Okay, let's see how you did here. So again, you should have looked at the table and you should have gotten 0.6915. Again, that represents all the data to the left of 0.5. Now we want to take and figure out, well, what's to the left of negative 0.5? Because we want to subtract that from that total. So to do that, you would take 1 minus 0.6915, which gives you 0 0.3085. And if I subtract those two values, that would give me the area under the graph between negative 0.5 and 0.5. So when you do that, you get 0.383, which would be about 38% of your data. So there you have it. That is how we um, use that table to find the probabilities of values underneath or below a certain standard deviation. So with that, good luck now as you work on your assignments.